December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. What do I remember? Lyle Peterson, Dick Bjork, Roly Swanson, and a couple other guys who we had been bowling down on Washington Street at Ten Pin, I think they called it, Ten Pin Lanes. And we got done bowling and we came out of there. I lived on 18th and I don't know who had the car. It might have been Dick, because uh, he was able to finagle his dad's car from time to time. and. Uh, we came out of that bowling alley and heard something about Pearl Harbor or Japan has bombed Pearl Harbor. What's Pearl Harbor? Where is that? And uh, that's how we got involved in that. And then in 1941, and Dick Bjork and I are were about the same age, and uh, so we went up and uh, somewhere in 42, I guess it was, uh, we were going to enlist in the Navy, and uh, he and I went together. Uh, Chief Harrison, when the beautiful post office building was over on Washington 3rd Street, um, nice building and Chief Harrison was the recruiting officer and uh, I failed the eye test so uh, Dick went in and I didn't until uh, August of 43 when uh, I got uh, called up. Because it was something new and I didn't have good eyesight they said that I couldn't probably stand uh, watches at night on board ship. And I said, well, I want to be in the Navy. We got something new. <laughs> we got some and I come to find out over the years, this something new got a lot of guys in to the Seabees because they were either flat foot or they couldn't see so good or they were colorblind or some other uh, infirmity, if you want to call it that. Of course, at that time, they were bringing in older gentlemen, and it was all men at that time uh, in World War II. Uh, it was guys, and uh, they wanted the tradespeople, the carpenters, the electricians, uh, well, cook or cooks, and bakers, and painters, and depending on their experience and age, why, uh, their rate, uh, they would get a rate uh, petty officer or possibly a, uh, a ranking uh, of an officer. But uh, so that's how I got into the CBs to define and differentiate the fleet from the CBs. They even issued a little. CB for our left arm so that uh, they would know that it was construction battalion people. And uh, of course that's how the name Seabees, S-E-A-B-E-E, -E -E, uh, which should be uppercase. Uh, that was the acronym yeah. of CB, the construction battalions, and uh, Frank Infantre uh, in Rhode Island, who eventually became a CB himself, designed the logo, and uh, he made the logo, and uh, uh, it was approved by the Bureau of Yards and Docks. And we were trained under the under the Marines, and uh, there's still a tremendous camaraderie between the Marines and the CBs even to today. Well, your motto was, we build and fight with all our might. So you really had, a, you had two real skill sets. You were more than a con just construction people. You had to sometimes strap it on a gun. That was what 
our training was. That you ended up going through the Panama Canal and all of a sudden your ship stopped. We had, uh, we were dead in the water and uh, the convoy wouldn't wait. And, uh, you know, I, you kind of think of that and uh, one of our 78 CBs uh, was uh, sighted for repairing the ship. Uh, I think it was the Mormac Sea. You know, you're sitting there with uh, a couple thousand troops and you're wondering, are we going to make it? <laughs> I mean, that, those things go through your mind. Uh, and I was among the, the, the first group of replacements uh, for the 78 CBs. And uh, we went into, uh, well, we had stopped shortly for Guadalcanal and Espirito Santos and the Hebrides, somewhere in through there. And, uh, we ended up uh, going into uh, the island of Los Negros in the Admiralties. And uh, there was fighting still going on there. And uh, uh, basically the jungle fighting, which we, uh, we lost a, a CB there. And uh, in fact, it was in the Admiralties where my uh, friend Van Dyke Underwood got killed. That was a real shocker to me, uh, to see a white cross with uh, Van Dyke Underwood. And, uh, it was a neighbor boy, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Cause we lived at 117 and he lived at something like 121 or whatever. Well, you wrote a wonderful letter, which is a preamble for this chapter in Raleigh's book. And it says, probably the most vivid memory of the war was the day I noticed the white cross in Los Negros Cemetery that had Van Dyke Underwood's name on it. We'd grown up on the same street block home, back home and were good buddies. I hadn't heard that he'd been killed. He'd lied about his age to get in the army. He was only 16 when he went in and wanted to go and fight in the war. He'd been on MacArthur's invasion force on this godforsaken island in the South Pacific as part of the 1st Cavalry Division. Now, here he was, far from home, buried in the sand. Uh, and then you went on to say, uh, at least the Americans had been buried. It was three or four weeks since the main battle, and there were still Japanese bodies lying around. The stench was unbelievable. It's difficult to believe now that I was there. Not only that, but that I was alive and Van Dyke Underwood was dead. Just a couple of kids from a small town who'd never been anywhere, and here I ended up being the lucky one on an island no one ever heard of, Los Negros. And you were going to say about probably only 10 people in the town even today would ever heard of the place. So you literally, I mean, I'm visualizing, you're, you're walking Los Negros and you see a white cross and there's a name. Like, whoa, what's that? Well, it brings back bad memories. Would have been what you might call sort of a quiet day for our fighting. And uh, Americans had established a cemetery there because as I mentioned, we attempted to bury our dead and uh, just come across uh, Junior's Cross. And uh, you know, you don't believe it at first but you know that it's a reality. And um, that, I've seen a guy get stabbed in the back and you see that injury and the blood, one thing or another. And, uh, but this is a friend, this is somebody you knew. And it really brought it back to the fact that uh, war is hell. Uh, two standing in a field, one is taken. And uh, uh, 
it's just one of those things that stick with you.